This is a lensless camera and we went lensless to remove the lens so that we can achieve such a small size. Here, uh, usually if you have a camera with lens like our eyes, uh, the lens helps us to focus, but it limits the size of the camera. Here, by removing it, we can make it this small, but we have to compensate for the lens somehow. So we are uh, removing the lens completely from the system and replacing it with, in this case, uh, an amplitude mask, which is basically we block some of the light and we allow some of the light to come through uh, directly to the sensor. And what we see is some combination of, of those opening uh, those open and closed areas landing on the sensor and we use that to reconstruct the image and we can get a very small form factor down to in the case of this device less than 500 microns which is about uh, five human hairs um, so it's very very thin um, much smaller than the thinness of a, a credit card even uh, and we anticipate being able to use this in medical application so what i think is most exciting about what we've done now is we've taken this idea of, of of taking a three-dimensional camera, shrinking it down to something that be very tiny, and with that gives us some advantages that you would not have if you were using a lensed system. And we discovered that with the flat cam, we had a lot of advantages, and we wanted to ask the question if, if we could get some of those same advantages for imaging at the micro scale. So could we make a flat microscope? Now there's a couple of reasons why we were interested in this. One is that there's this trade-off when you have a lens microscope between magnification and your field of view. Basically, if you want to zoom in on a very small object, you need a large magnification. But when you do that, you don't get to see very much of your sample. Now what we've done with this flat scope is shown that when you don't have lenses, you don't have to make that trade-off. So we can see things that are very tiny, but we can see them over a large area. So this idea that we can see small things over a large area means that we can image uh, potentially lots of biological activity. And that's very exciting for me and my lab where we study the brain. So the dream is that we could take these flat microscopes that can see uh, individual cells over large areas and implant them into the body, perhaps into the brain. And that would allow us to look at neural activity over these large areas and understand how the ensemble of activity inside of the brain leads to things like behavior.